In a previous video, <coughs> we examined the matrix A being negative 4, negative 6, 3, 5. And what we found is that when we took A times the matrix, or the vector, 2, negative 2, that was simply the same as multiplying the vector by the number 2. So we said that that uh, vector, 2, negative 2, was an eigenvector of the matrix, and the number 2 is the corresponding eigenvalue. By the way, there's no um, relationship between all the 2's here, that's just a coincidence um, that we have 2's in, uh, in the eigenvector and uh, that our eigenvalue is 2. So the question now is, if, if we just started with the matrix A, how would we know or how would we find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors <coughs> for the matrix? And uh, the way, so the point of this video is to show us how to find the eigenvalues and then we'll go on in the next um, uh, video to see how to find the eigenvectors. So there's an equation we use that's what I would call the <coughs> eigenvalue eigenvector equation. It says a times a vector x is equal to lambda times x. So we use the Greek word lambda. That's not just to confuse everybody, but that's just the traditional let you, letter used. So uh, lambda in this case is a scalar. So basically what we're looking for is a scalar such that multiplying a vector x, well actually we're looking for the vector x itself and the scalar, to where multiplying x by a is the same as multiplying by the scalar lambda. So the key to figuring out both lambda and x, see the problem is we have, we have two unknowns there, the vector and the eigenvalue. Uh, the key is to modify this equation just a little bit. So let's take a look at how we do that. The first thing I'll do is uh, I'll move the uh, lambda x to the left side. So we have ax <coughs> minus lambda x equals zero, and ax and lambda x are vectors, so this must be the zero vector, so I'll indicate that. And then multiplying a, a, a vector by a scalar is the same as multiplying uh, by a diagonal matrix that's obtained by taking that scalar times the identity. So I can actually just slip the identity matrix in there like this. <clears throat> and then at that point, we can factor the vector x out. And so we have a times, uh, or a minus lambda i times x equals the zero vector. So um, this a minus lambda i is a, is a matrix in its own right. We could think of it as perhaps a matrix B. And so what we have then is we have that Bx equals zero. Now what we know about this is that zero is a solution for sure. But that's a trivial solution. It's not very interesting to us. And so uh, the question is, can we find other solutions, other vectors x? So are there other solutions? Well, what we know from, from our previous study is that if b is invertible, that zero will be the only solution. So what we want, if we want additional solutions besides zero, is we want uh, b to not be invertible. And one condition for not being invertible is that its determinant is zero. So what we want is the determinant of b to be zero, but b is actually a minus lambda i. So we want determinant of a minus lambda i to be equal to zero. And that's not the zero vector anymore. Remember the determinant of a matrix is simply a number. So we want the determinant of a minus lambda i to be equal to zero. So let's uh, let's find a minus lambda i. That's our first step then to actually figuring out what lambda should be. So a minus lambda i is equal to negative 4, negative 6, 3, 5 minus lambda times 1, 0, 0, 1. 
So let's move all this stuff up so we can work here. Uh, looks like I'm going to have a little problem there with some things on top of each other, but I think we can work around that. So now what we get is we have negative 4, negative 6, and 3, 5, minus uh, lambda, 0, 0, lambda. Okay, and that results in the matrix uh, whose entries are negative 4 minus lambda, negative 6, 3, and 5 minus lambda. So now we need to take the determinant of that matrix. And so let's see, it looks like I'm going to need to go on to another page. Um, so let's remember what that matrix looks like. So picking up where we left off, A minus lambda I is the, the matrix I've shown here. So what we want is the determinant of that to be 0. So we want 0 to equal the determinant of A minus lambda I. And the determinant in this case is uh, obtained by multiplying the uh, diagonal of the matrix and then subtracting uh, the product we get on the upward diagonal. So in other words, in this case, it's negative 4 minus lambda times 5 minus lambda minus 3 times negative 6. So that's actually AD minus BC if we refer to the entries of the matrix as A, B, C, and D. Um, when we multiply this out, we get negative 20. Um, looks like negative 20 plus 4 lambda minus 5 lambda plus lambda squared plus 18. So if I rearrange that a little bit, we get lambda squared uh, minus lambda minus 2. And that can be factored to lambda minus 2 times lambda plus 1. And we want that product, of course, to equal 0. So what that tells us then is that our eigenvalues are lambda equals 2 and lambda equals negative 1. And it's customary to subscript the um, eigenvalues somehow so that we can tell one from the other. So I'll just call this lambda sub 1 and lambda sub 2. Okay, so what we found out then is that the eigenvalues of A equals um, negative 4, negative 6, 3, 5 are lambda 1 equals 2 and lambda 2 equals negative 1. So in the next video what we'll do is we'll pick up here, we'll take those two uh, eigenvalues and find out how to obtain the eigenvectors that correspond to them or the eigenspaces.